maybe everyone watching right now uh, can uh, learn something from it or can take something away from it. So you're not, you're not alone if you're actually dealing with depression or anxiety or if you know especially this lockdown or quarantine is increasing your anxiety. It's normal, it's natural, it's ought to happen. But there are definitely certain ways we can, you know, use to cope with the anxiety as well and to talk about those and a lot of other solutions as well. Luckily, I've been joined by someone who's amazing at what she does. She's a clinical psychologist, Ms. Tahira Javed. Hello, assalamu alaikum, Tahira. Hi, Welcome back to my show. Thank you so much for having me again. It's my pleasure, Tahira. So to begin with, um, I want you, since you are regularly even in COVID-19 dealing with clients on a daily basis, um, there may be some who maybe, you know, had to go through or had to bear coronavirus as well. You tell me, generally speaking, how is Pakistani Awam dealing with this depression and anxiety of COVID-19? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned that uh, I have been coming across people who have been diagnosed and who have gone through the COVID situation mm -hmm. themselves, right? So the first thing that they're going through is actually the attitude of people when even they are fine, they are out of the situation, their tests have been negative. But then again, the relatives, friends, uh, acquaintances or mm -hmm. neighbors, mm -hmm. they deal them very differently. They have a very negative attitude towards them. They uh, okay. stigmatize and uh, places taboos against them and they, they are like, uh, even if they are fine, mm -hmm. if we would meet with them, we would have the virus uh, to our families. So they are like excluding them from the society and we are helping these people to get settled in their lives again. This is right. one of the attitude which is creating anxiety and depression among those who have been already uh, going through a mm. lot of physical brains. Absolutely, and Tahira, you know, you I think you actually probably even uncognizantly raised a very important point mm -hmm. of rehabilitation, yeah. which is so important. I mean, of course, people are, uh, some of the people who did contract the virus earlier on, there are chances that they may recontract it, or you know, the virus may, the symptoms may reappear mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. people as well. But for the ones who have fully recovered of it, uh, I mean, alhamdulillah, for their recovery as well. But like Tahira, you mentioned people stigmatizing them. It's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but at this point, I think we need to discuss the mindset of the people, or mm -hmm. let's say the their thinking, where it's coming from, because this is not the first time. Even if we talk about AIDS, people deal with people bearing with AIDS the same way they're mm -hmm. de dealing with people bearing with Corona, mm -hmm. while they're like, you know, do obviously different things, but we're talking about the mindset over here. Mm -hmm. They both have like right. different dimensions entirely. Mm -hmm. What can we actually do something, you know, to make people understand this is legit, this mm -hmm. is gonna happen to anyone, God forbid, mm -hmm. and we all need to be careful. If we talk about mindsets, naturally our mind is prone to dwell towards negativity. Okay. We are more focused towards negative aspects. So for that, we actually lack uh, the ability to get more information about the problem. Mm -hmm. We just exclude the point that this can happen to anyone in life. Right. This can happen to us, this can happen to people around us, this can mm. come in our families. So because of their negative mindset, they are unable to understand. Uh, again, there is so much information going on on social media which okay. is fake. People are more inclined towards the fake information because that's more negative. Exactly. When people are talking about positive and they're t trying to tell you how to cope with it or what mm -hmm. are the actual circumstances related to this, we neglect that and All we are right. prone towards the negative aspect. This is actually the mindset of our people. And okay. we, as like, we, uh, we are already dealing with so many prejudices in our country. Mm. So we actually uh, take this context into the same prejudice and we try to exclude these people from our societies. Unfortunately, that's really so sad on a large level as yeah. well. But you know, Tahira is still speaking of the people who had to, uh, you know, sort of go through this unfortunate disease as well and then mashallah recovered. Mm. Um, Yes, there is a certain level of anxiety. And once I feel like, and I think you're gonna agree with me as well, once you go through the anxiety or depression due to any reason, mm -hmm. anything can, can exacerbate it, right? Mm -hmm. Anything can mm -hmm. add to it and there's no stopping to that as well. Mm -hmm. So when you were dealing with all of those, was it getting to you as well? Yes, it was getting to us as well, because especially when we were forced to be at home working in a very mm. different situation, so it was getting to us as well. All right. right. But then uh, very earlier, I identified a few things which I always shared with my clients to have okay. a proper routine. Actually, because of this lockdown, we lacked 
our routine. We forgot about Sundays and Mondays and vacations. Right. Our sleep schedule was upset. We were just taking everything on us. So what I decided for myself and which I suggested to people was to have a proper routine, was mm. to follow a proper sleep schedule, mm -hmm. and then to limit the amount of information that was coming to them uh, related to COVID. So oh, I always suggest to have 15 or 20 minutes a news time, mm -hmm. and then just forget about it. Yeah. All you need to have is that information that uh, what are how are people dealing uh, with this situation right. and then follow the SOPs that are already been suggested. You don't have to be all the time on news and listening about this hmm. and then following up with the fake news as well. Absolutely. So rely on only the authentic resources hmm. and then just 15 or 20 minutes of information. That right. will help you out through this. That is actually brilliant and I really hope a lot of people can sort of uh, comply with that as well or you know be strict about that the kind of information that they're receiving too because there's a lot of misinformation on the internet as well you know Zaira ever since citizen uh, journalism came in it's a good mm -hmm. thing of course freedom of speech yay but the, but the worst part is misinformation and a lot of information I mean you can't mm -hmm. pick and choose for a normal mind to sit there when you have 6,000 articles about mm -hmm. the same thing he doesn't know which one is authentic exactly. which one is legit mm -hmm. but now Zaira since you deal with the entire working of the mindset and brain. I want you to explain to me, mm -hmm. what are those people, the segment of society in Pakistan who just blatantly said, Corona doesn't exist, mm -hmm. it's a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is this? <laughs> I've been talking about this since uh, three, four weeks because there are multiple conspiracy theories going on. Right. One of them is like, uh, they are placing a chip and I usually tell them, yeah. if they are installing a chip, why would they need it? You already have mobile phones mobile in your phones. home. <laughs> like, why would they need a chip? And how would they do it? Like, mm. without any surgery, without letting you know, how, how would they install a chip inside you? <laughs> that, in Especially without your consent, right? right? So this mindset is basically we uh, somehow we are prone to develop rumors. We spread rumors without any information. As I said, we actually uh, more uh, talk about negative aspects, right? right? So because of that mindset, mm -hmm. we are spreading rumors which are negative without checking the authenticity. And we like to believe them for some yeah. reason. Yeah, we like to believe, and we. Uh, again about believing we believe what is coming from our acquaintances my friend hmm. friend of friend and my taya and my <laughs> chacha so that is the authenticity hmm. how would they know they are sitting at home like you they they are not related to any technological field they are not related to china or america or U any other country hmm. right how would they know that this is authentic mm -hmm. so we believe uh, just because the information is coming from one of my friend or one of my relative right. so that is right Hmm. So and despite you know, checking in, sort of rechecking or reassuring that where it's coming from, you're absolutely right. And speaking of rumors, I don't know what I don't know what kick you guys get for all of those who do spread rumors. Not all this of you. This is just attention seeking. Yeah, attention seeking, or probably I don't know what sort of adrenaline rush it's giving to them. I'll I'll tell you an example. Mm -hmm. This is uh, from a small town in Gujarat. Uh, no names, of course. So there was um, a vegetable vendor with a mm -hmm. with a cart, of course, selling vegetables. So he had a fever for quite some days, three or four. Mm -hmm. So the buyers noticed, mm -hmm. and two of the kind people you know the buyers took him to the hospital mm -hmm. unfortunately a day or two later he passed on so everyone in that town now believes that they take you to the hospital with the name of corona and mm -hmm. then um, you know this is of course again a rumor and then they kill you over there in the hospital with their ejections so even if my family member is going through corona I'm not going to take them or admit them in the hospital this is so this is true. insanity this is so true that people are actually doing this I, I know another family who actually insisted one of the doctor to admit their patient, mm -hmm. which was already refused by multiple hospitals because they were on deathbed, right? So oh. they were like, uh, we can't take them. Okay. So just take them home. They they cannot be treated. Mm. But they went to another hospital, insisted a lot, and the hospital management told them we are only taking corona patients. Oh. So they were like, just take them as a corona patient. Uh -huh. When the person was dead, which was already diagnosed, they, they, he was on deathbed, right? Okay. So With when the chronic the, illness problem. Exactly, okay. right. So when he died, mm -hmm. because they, he was admitted on corona panel, yeah. so they were not giving the dead body back and they were taking all the precautions and all, and then the family said that they diagnosed him with corona, mm -hmm. whereby you insisted to take him on that role. So mm -hmm. now when, he, when they are not letting you take the body right. back just because of the... Uh, SOPs that they are bound to follow, now th this is another propaganda. 
Right, and you know, then we have to sort of, you know, it makes you think who are the people who are wronging it all for everybody. And mm -hmm. there are just so many to point out. I mean, it, this is a really long debate as well. But ladies and gentlemen, earlier I mentioned as well, COVID-19 is not the only thing wrong with uh, the entire nation or the entire world as well. Unfortunately, due to the lockdown, a lot of people, a lot of couples, husbands, wives, and you know, even a lot of families have to stay together 24 seven because there is no office. I mean, now it's relatively easy at the lockdown, but earlier as well for two months straight, there was no mm. work, there was no school, colleges, anything. And because of that, uh, domestic abuse was on major rise. We, I mean, were receiving stories or we were even in conversation with people, with women especially. I'm not making it gender based, but unfortunately, most of the reported stories are from women. They have to go through a lot of brutality at home uh, because no one's there to check or they cannot even go out to probably complain to someone or inform someone and call someone for help. So Tahira, first of all, have you been dealing with such people who probably had to face domestic mm -hmm. abuse, unfortunately? Yes. And number two, we know a lot of people watching right now might be taking help from this. Maybe mm -hmm. they're going through similar stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Let them know what they can do about it. I've been coming across people who have been actually directly facing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And the major reason was just because ke when men used to be out at their work, right. they used to be ventilating their emotions there. Mm -hmm. Their aggression wasn't coming back home. They were uh, utilizing their energies and time most of the time outside the house, right? right? So when they were forced to live at home with the same member, in like they weren't allowed to go for uh, even like walks and all because this was again a problem people had st started spreading the rumor you can't even go out for walk because mm -hmm. you can take the virus back mm -hmm. so they were living in the same household because of which they weren't able to ventilate their emotions so they the frustration was building up okay and uh, because you were going against nature's law you weren't mm. going, you weren't doing anything, and you were uh, living with the same family members. So this frustration was coming out in form of anger. Mm -hmm. And anger was directly uh, directed towards most of the time uh, spouse or uh, even sometimes towards children as well. Yeah, right? unfortunately so. So uh, what we were suggesting is, what we did in this situation was to help them, uh, we offered them to text us okay. if it is not possible for them to call because mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the spouse is already there and they can't talk. So we offered them that they can seek help through messages. They can seek help through voice messages or through calls. Right. So that we can, uh, and then we uh, suggested to actually get help from neighbors. Hmm. Right, hmm. neighbors are the first person who can always be there to help you out. Of course, right, because uh, till then we didn't had any proper hotlines for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So neighbors are the one who can help. Okay, that's actually very, um, I want to say, effective as well, because um, in, I, I hate saying this, but in DHE too, so I was living with a family member of mine for a few days, and our next door neighbor, continuously, she was beaten every day with, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, a lot of crying and noises and whatnot. So one day, one of the males of our house, you know, went on to theirs and asked, is, is everything okay? Do you guys need help? And he was shunned, of course. Mm -hmm. The issue over here, Tahira, is a lot of people will deny they are going through violence because of the fear of being beaten again, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So a lot of uh, people who might be watching this right now who are unfortunately going through this, um, you do not deserve this. Do not accept it as your fate. This is not your fate. This is some unfortunate incident in the series of, you know, the steps that you will take for your fate. Do not stand there alone, taking it all in the name of your honor, in the name of your families, you know, in the name of your children. You do not des deserve that. Please do reach out to some, I want to say, legit authorities who can help you out. Reach out to your neighbors, reach out to your parents, your friends, or your siblings. Just let them know what you're going through. And if you surrender once, that means you're letting the person do it repeatedly exactly. you're inviting them so you do have the right to stand up for yourself if you would not stand up hmm. the person would never stop Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. Now towards the end, ladies and gentlemen, I want to mention over here that Tahira Javed actually works as a head consultant for an organization called Pechan. Am I right, Tahira? Yes. Let exactly. me know what Pechan does, and especially in COVID-19, are mm -hmm. there some new projects that you guys are on to? Uh, Pechan is basically an online uh, forum that is working for creating mental health awareness as mm -hmm. well as providing mental health services. Perfect. And in this situation, we are offering uh, online support groups for anxiety and depression so that people can roll in 
uh, by setting it their home mm -hmm. and they can understand that they're not alone in this situation and we are providing them solutions in that support group. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, then we are providing online consultations and online therapies. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, on through our uh, social media handles, we are providing them tips and techniques to handle uh, these uh, anxiety, depression and grief issues. Oh, that's perfect. And we are providing helpline services as well. So what kind of response are you getting? Are, are a lot of people, of course, they might mm -hmm. be in need of uh, professional help, right? Mm -hmm. Mentally and emotionally. Yes, they are. But mm -hmm. uh, the kind of issues that we uh, we have been initially facing was people are not that much friendly with this online system. They are more inclined towards having one, one to one, one or face, uh, yeah, face okay. to face. Mm -hmm. But now uh, for the last month, this system has been uh, like people are more inclined towards this and th the response is getting very good. Uh, one of uh, the factor that is uh, hampering this issue is because people have mm. privacy issues at home. Right, of course. Right? So they can't really talk to you, I mean, yeah. openly about whatever they're going through. Th this is one of the things that is making an issue for them. And for that, what we have offered is if someone is going through a lot of pain, so they can contact us through emails or through uh, WhatsApp conversations. Okay. So if we can be of any help, although we do mm -hmm. understand that's not enough, but at least you can uh, give your support in some way. Right, and you know, that's where you start. You know, exactly. you start by something small and then it does make a ripple effect as well. Thank you so much for being here, Tahira Javed. You're brilliant, mashallah. We'd love to have you again thank as well. So and thank you so much for actually serving humanity because that is the best kind of job, especially in 2020 as well, where everything is going downhill, unfortunately. I have no idea why though, but in these testing times, ladies and gentlemen, we have to stick together. That is the key. I mean, I look at the future, I, I imagine the future and I think about, you know, us, thinking about 2020 and what we had to go through. And I think one thing we will regret in the future is why we were not united or why we were not together to fight through this COVID-19 as well. We have to think about all those positives that are coming up. Exactly. The unity, all the, uh, we are getting back to the nature stuff and exactly. all. Exactly. So the, if we look towards positive, we can get through the situation in a more better way. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope you learned something good like I did from this segment as well. Right now, I'm he heading to a very short break, but when I come back, I will have someone very amazing for you guys. He actually has an idea on how to cope up with the anxiety and stress of COVID-19 through a very uh, new or unique way. You'll find out if you stay tuned to BTV World. Good morning.
Welcome back to Well This Morning, ladies and gentlemen, on a very pleasant and informative morning, like every other morning here at BTV World as well. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, earlier, if you were watching the first segment as well, I think we really, you know, spoke about how maybe you can find out some healthy activities to take your mind off the COVID-19 as well. And some of all the reasons that are adding to the stress and anxiety of COVID-19, the pandemic itself, the lockdown, quarantine, everything going on as well, self-isolation too, which a lot of people are actually having trouble doing but here's the thing uh, creative people actually found out ways to stay busy to stay focused to nurture their mind and direct their mind in a way where negativity cannot reach to them i'm talking about the people who are again artists who have something really passionate you know to live by as well i have someone very similar someone very apt to talk about right here in the studios but about the introduction i think marshall he has so much to his name as well every one of you watching right now may know him as a very famous classical dancer a Kathak dancer here in Pakistan, all the, I mean, more than eight type of dancers that he even knows. Can you guys believe I don't even know the names of those dancers? He's absolutely talented and he is right here with me in the studio. He's none other than Mr. Khan Zada Aswanyar Khatak. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to Well This Morning. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right. So, Aswanyar, to begin with, Khan Zada Aswanyar Khatak sounds like a very familiar name. Tell me about your lineage, first of all. Right. Uh, so I'm uh, basically uh, 11th generation of Khushal Khan Khatak, the national poet of Afghanistan oh, and a very beautiful. famous Pashto poet, okay. freedom fighter. So he was a poet himself. Yes. So he was an artist himself. So uh, the art is, you know, being Flowing inherited. in the veins. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is brilliant. Mm. But now, um, I want this to be a profile interview because, of course, I've read about him. There's so many just articles about praising his work and everything. I want to take you back to where it all started, Aswanyar. Since you mentioned, I mean, there was a poet in your family as well. Were there classical dancers in your family who inspired you, probably? Uh, no, actually, there were no classical dancers. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, that Khatak dance is the national dance of, Afghan Afghanistan. of Pakistan as well. Yeah. Uh, Atan is the national dance of Afghanistan. OK. So, uh, you know, this, uh, why is Khatak dance only so famous? Why not other Atans or other Pashtun dances of Wazirs, Masuds, or Quetta? Yeah. That's because, you know, Khatak was the first tribe to establish itself in its own area. Okay. It had its own courts, uh, you know, so the, the Akora Khatak, uh, Sarai Akora Khatak was established in 1540s okay. by great grand grandfather of Khushal Khan Khatak. And since, since that time, proper courts were there of the okay. Khatak tribe. And when there are proper courts, there is art. Uh, hmm. which flourishes as well. And also, you know, Khatak is a tribe which has fought all its neighboring tribes. Right. So when there were fights, they were, you know, they were happy. But when there were no tribes, they used to have this Khatak dance as a martial uh, dance because, oh. you know, it was done with swords. It's, it is still done with swords. Right, right. And, you know, in, th in the south, in Kohat, we had our own state of Teri, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, was the first Nawabi amongst Pashtuns as well. Okay. So, you know, all these Khans and Nawabs and chiefs, they used to patronize Khatak dance. Right, that's yes. brilliant. You know, of course, we have heard about it um, in history books uh, as well, literature as well, seen some videos of it. But to actually learn it from someone who is actually coming from that lineage as well, it's really interesting. But now, Aswanyar, um, let me know about the nine-year-old or let's say the twelve-year-old Aswanyar. Was he thinking to be a, to be an engineer in the future, to be a doctor in the future, or like even at that time you wanted to be a dancer? Always, I always wanted to be a dancer. You oh, know, nice. since my very childhood, you know, I'd been dancing. And if I may say that, you know, s even uh, when I couldn't even talk, you know, I used to dance. And, nice. you know, uh, always, you know, during in engagements, during mm. weddings. And in 2001, I started uh, learning proper Kathak oh. in Islamabad uh, from Saima Khushnoji. Oh. And her father had actually taught uh, uh, the film actress um, uh, Reema. Mm, brilliant. Uh, and, uh, you so must be so proud of that. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh -huh. Definitely. So, yeah, so in 2001, I started learning Kathak. And in 2007, I was very lucky to become a student of Madam Indu Mithaji, who is 90 oh, years old. Yes, of course. And then I started and learning legend, South mashallah. Indian classical dance, Bharat Natyam, from her. Uh -huh. She is a legend, and, you know, we uh, simply adore her, all of us. Because, you know, I have learned everything from her. Oh, that's really nice. But now, you know, Aswanyar, a lot of people who don't have inborn natural talents, like me, I don't know how to play an instrument. I don't know how to, let's say, sing or even dance. So we have to look for creative ways for 
catharsis even, or you know, to even cope with depression. If I'm going, if I'm having a bad day, if I'm going through something really rough, I'll have to look for the perfect movie to probably, you know, let it all out. Mm -hmm. But mashallah, you're blessed. So how was it you, for you to actually have something, a passion, a hobby, and then, I mean, that to be your profession as well? Yes. It must be so exciting. I'm very, very excited about this turn in my life that, you know, everything is coming true. Uh, because, you know, uh, not everybody is that lucky that, I you know, know, whatever they want to do, that they also uh, accomplish it. Hmm. So you were talking about depression and about all the negative energies. Uh, Maulana Rumi has said that, you know, everything is dancing. Every uh, particle in the hmm. world is dancing. Some are dancing in sorrow and some are dancing in happiness. Oh, wow. So Beautiful. I would go for the uh, particles which dance in happiness. Beautiful. And by the way, Maulana Rumi was also born in Balkh in the present day Afghanistan. Okay. And in 13th century, he migrated to present day Turkey. Mm -hmm. So the Sufi whirling Darwish dance yeah. evolved because he uh, traveled from here and he uh, in his childhood had learned Atan. Okay. And Atan is also done in a similar way hmm. and later on the Sufi Darwish dance evolved because you know Atan is also done with our left foot grounded in the okay. left foot which is the connection with the heart mm -hmm. that that is made a pivot yes. and we you know whirl on uh, with our right foot. That's so you know beautiful. the Sufi Darwish dance uh, was also you know it has got a strong connection from present day Afghanistan hmm. and of course we inherit it through our Atan as well. So That's you know beautiful. this was as Qatar says and where as and when people became urbanized, as and when people became educated mm. and they started working in the cities, they stopped doing whatever they had been doing in their rural lives. Oh, this is one of the pictures. Can you let me know what is happening over here? This, this is, the, is the Sufi Darwish whirling dance, you know, and you can see the similarities. I mean, look at my dress. Oh, yeah. Almost so, similar, you know, right? So uh, this was the traditional dress for the males. It's still worn in uh, parts of Balochistan and in Afghanistan as well. Okay. But, you know, uh, with time, you know, everything changes. Hmm. Now only the females wear such kind of baggy shirts okay. and dresses uh, with in embroidery, hmm. but only in the rural areas. In the modern cities like Peshawar and in Kabul, you will see, uh, you know, women uh, wearing different sort of dresses, the no right. normal, uh, you know, new new era fashionable dresses. Of course. But, you know, of but course. But the culture remains, right? The, the culture And remains. it does run in the blood as well, because yes. when you talk about festivities, you guys would resort back to these dresses as Definitely. well. Definitely. But now, Aswan Yar, you know, uh, Marshall has just, by the way, let me mention over here, he's been to so many different countries in the world, like Malaysia and so many other representing Pakistan and, you know, uh, sort of showcasing the entire immense talent that he has. But Aswan Yar, early in the morning, I was going through, um, of course, I Googled you to read out some articles. And one, there was a very interesting headline. This was recently, probably, last month or last week, which said, um, Asfan Yar uh, or Khansa that dances his way through COVID-19. Did you have a performance through that? Do you have a certain mechanism or a pattern which is helping you to fight through COVID-19? Actually, when this uh, lockdown started, you know, I had uh, many performances planned mm -hmm. at, uh, you know, this Shish Mahal in Lahore oh, with uh, uh, Madam Nigachi. Uh, wow. And, uh, you know, but then things were delayed and mm -hmm. cancelled because of COVID-19, unfortunately. But, you know, for a dancer, for an artist, you know, uh, the dance can't be stopped. Of course. The art can't, is, uh, can't be stopped. So I danced on a Pashto song, which was sung by Harun Bacha, the famous Pashto singer. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, regarding uh, awareness and prevention of Corona. Okay. So I danced on it in my own drawing room uh, okay. at my home in Islamabad. And, you know, so that became viral. Uh, and then, you know, later on, I uh, started teaching online. Uh, you know, I started. Uh, I wanted to get to that, of course. Let me just make it into a question and then I get to <laughs> you as well. Because this was really interesting. You know, mm. Aswania, it's really amazing for me to meet people who live by their passion. And it's so rare. I mean, a lot of people, including me probably, they will spend their entire lives finding their true passion. And then they are lucky people like you who know what it is. So here's the thing even when the lockdown was going on, um, he did not stop for a while. When, of course, the gigs or the shows were sort of on a halt because of the lockdown, people were not coming out. Then you you resorted to, you know, like we say, modern problems require modern solutions. So yes. what you did, did was taking online classes. Yes. How were people responding to it? And generally speaking, are Pakistanis or the new generation open to the idea of learning dances? Uh, first, I'll uh, answer your first uh, hmm. part of question. You know, I started, uh, I've started giving classes on pomegranate garden dance, which is an online 
uh, platform to learn dance, and it's basically Central Asian dances. Okay. And as uh, Afghanistan also lies in Central Asia, so I, again, I'm the lucky one that you know I am able to teach dance with the Persians and with the Tajiks and Uzbeks. Wow. And you know, these are people who have been running their academy since 20 or 30 long years, and Brilliant. some of them are foreigners, like you know, people from Poland and from Germany and hmm. non-Central uh, Asian people who have learned our languages, like uh, Persian and uh, Uzbek. And you know they are teaching our dances and also you know uh, working on the ethnology. So the amazing people, the lovely people, and I'm also one of uh, the dancers who teaches dance over there. Okay, so, that's uh, nice. The, the and just to mention over here, I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you the only well-trained male dancer in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and also Afghanistan? Yes, I'm the Brilliant. only one who has Mashallah. learned uh, classical dance, Kathak and Bharatnatyam, mm -hmm. and uh, the only one who actually performs. Uh, you know you know, a anywhere and everywhere. Because yeah. I, you know, I have this uh, philosophy that, you know, you know, one should dance everywhere and in anywhere. You know, one should not limit oneself to a stage or to a proper mm. function because, you know, th that kills the, you know, the basic, uh, uh, you know, spirit of dance. Right, absolutely. And then you should try to resonate with the rhythm of the entire universe as well. That is, yes, brilliant. Uh, Aswanya, can you let me know or can you name some of the types of dances that you do know? And maybe it's going to be a hard question, but can you really put a finger on your favorite one? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, talking about classical dance, I've learned the North Indian classical dance, which is Kathak mm -hmm. and the South Indian classical dance called Bharat Natyam. Yeah. And uh, then uh, being a Khatak, being Afghan Pathan, yeah. I know the Khatak dance yeah. and the Athan, which is the Afghan national dance. Hmm. Yes, please go and on. And then there's Logari, which is from a Logar province of Afghanistan. It's mm -hmm. beautiful music and mostly I, you know, do a fusion of Khatak and Kathak on All Logari right. music. Wow, that's brilliant. Now here we have a picture from, I want to say, the ruling ancestors of, uh, of course, the subcontinent as well in Afghanistan too. Yes. Do you have something to say about this? Yes, because, you know, Khushal Khan Khatak, he uh, fought against the Mughal Emperor yeah. uh, Aurangzeb Alamgir, and he fought for the rights of Afghans, for the mm -hmm. rights of Pashtuns, and he used his sword and his pen, his poetry, to fight for yeah. the rights. And I, in his 11th generation, in yeah. 21st century, I'm using my ghungru, my sword, and my rumal, the handkerchief, Beautiful. to to fight against the hatred and all the negative energies because you know in our fight in our daily life we are also fighting with the negative energies of course so you know it's a struggle and dance is also a struggle hmm. to yeah. cope up with that all sort of negative yes. energies thank you so much for saying that and thank you so much for being here as when you are but ladies and gentlemen i'm not going to let you go like that because um it was really exciting for me to have him over here thus i'm going to make sure that he performs for us is that going to be the corona dance that you um, invented can i say that yes uh, i invented it and uh, it's also because you know people are a bit depressed uh, as well mm. of corona so i've uh, chosen an upbeat music okay. in which there's going to be fight with the swords with all the negative energies and you know let's uh, dance with all the positivity brilliant. and uh, brilliant just uh, killing away the negative vibes exactly. and i just cannot wait to watch that ladies and gentlemen just after this very short break you can watch him live dance in front of you as well uh, but here's the thing if you need to uh, ask us anything if you need to give us feedback about anything write us on facebook page with the name of well this morning you can write to us on Twitter with the name of Well This Morning without a G, on YouTube with the name of PTV World and then Well This Morning, and the repeat of this show you can catch at 5 past 11 p.m. tonight. Heading out to a short break. Stay tuned because, well, the Corona dance awaits you. Good morning.
All right, so we're back after the very short break that we promised, ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, right on to uh, Mr. Aswandi Yar Khatak over here, who's going to perform an amalgamation of Khatak and Kathak dance for us, and he's naming it as a Corona dance. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's dance away through COVID-19. Aswandi Yar, take the lead. Thank you. 